Okay, for this video, my intended audience is again my fellow software engineering students and anybody interested in programming Atmel, um, uh, Atmel circuit boards. Uh, so what you're looking at here is assembly language, and this is Atmel Studio. It's a superset of Visual Studio 2010. Uh, at least that's what it looks like anyway. So this is question two on one of my homeworks that I had. Um, I think I'll just be doing this one. I was going to make an example myself, but I just didn't end up having enough time to do that. So uh, this works just as well. This one deals with uh, a lot of ports. So hopefully I can explain that in the timely matter reach in uh, 10 minutes or less. Um, so these commands here, uh, if you're familiar with C language, uh, for those of you not in my class and watching this just on YouTube, um, the, this is kind of like a uh, a header file in C. You need all of this to make a basic assembly language program. Without this, sometimes you would use a port. Yeah, for well, example, if you don't have this dot include file here, it won't know what port B is in pin zero. So that that is important. Next line here, I have a label. The label doesn't really. I don't really utilize the label in this program, but um, it's helpful for like people reading the program uh, just to know where the program actually starts. I have a load immediate into R16 and I'm loading it into zero. And there's a reason I'm doing that, and I'll show you in a sec. I'm next storing R16 into port B uh, data direct register. So a port is basically like another register, but it's like an outside source. Think of like a USB, USB port and you're putting it in, you're plugging your flash drive into your computer or something. Um, I have a no-op here just because uh, one example in the book had a no-op, um, so I just put one there to be consistent with the book. Now for this, <coughs> there's a reason I am loading zero into your one, is because uh, well I'm storing zero in here. First reason is because we don't know what's in port B, so I'm just making it all zero in case there's some garbage there. So you you want to be sure of what's inside of there first. Second is because for this um, for this problem, I'm directed to use port B as input. If you go to the manual again, it says specifically here that um, if you go down somewhere, uh, right here. If data, if DIRN is written to one, pin configuration is as an output. If it's written to a zero, the pin configuration is as an input pin. So that's one way of the, uh, that they differentiate output for input. Now in the book you may see examples um, of this and they'll use in and out commands. Those commands won't work for our program because uh, those commands only work with like the first 64 registers. Uh, if I remember correctly, I might be referencing that wrong. But basically, uh, port B references some memory location that's at like six, place 600 and something. So they're completely like out of the scope of 0 to 64. Uh, so you need to use load and store. They're basically the same commands. I don't really understand why they just didn't expand in and out commands to, uh, you know, encapsulate ports in this board. But whatever. I mean, I'm still able to do it, so can't really complain. It's not that hard. All right. Next, I'm loading immediately into R16 this binary number. This binary binary number I have gotten based on our uh, pull-up configuration here. I'm using a pull-up register and I'm sensing a falling edge for X mega. Now what that means is that we go to our notes, which I might have available in a timely manner. Um, books, homework, 
hopefully we'll be able to see it. And yeah, maybe not. Let's see if I download it and like spin it around. And if you want, I can also put this on the YouTube video. In fact, I will. I'll, I'll make a link to it since it's on Google Drive already. And that way you can uh, use the same material that I'm using in this video and stay consistent. Um, let's see if it's going to spin around for me. It might not. Alright, well, I'm sorry you guys got to read from the side. But, uh, if you look here for this portion of the notes here, for the control registers, the first uh, bit, uh, the first one or zero in the binary number, I'm not sure if I'm saying a bit correctly, is like a byte, I think, I don't know. Um, the first one is, we're concerned about the slew rate, uh, we're not concerned about that, so it's going to be zero. This is inverted IO enable, we're not concerned about that either, we can just do that zero. OPC is the optimization pull configuration, which is what we're concerned about, because in the directions it said we had to do it on um, pull up, yeah, pull up register. So if you just look at this chart uh, and go down to where it says pull up um, here, where it says pull up input, just go across, gives you that binary d number. And then uh, input sense configuration, and then we're sensing a falling edge, so you just go over, get that number, and then you make um, this number here. Is that the one I came up with? Okay, next what we're going to do is we're going to reference each pin in the port, and you can see here that I'm still kind of confused about the syntax for using ports. It, I mean, assembly language is to me pretty confusing. So to other people is um, comes easier, uh, but I I seem to manage with using the manual and kind of figuring things out from there. Uh, if we go back to manual again, uh, we can go down and uh, we were looking for pins. Uh, you can see here's the pin configuration. We're going to be using a totem pole kind of deal. In the totem pole push and pull configuration, the pin is driven low or high according to the corresponding bit setting in the out register. Well, our out register is um, R16, um, and basically you load R16 to each of those pins. Each pin is like another register, so. Uh, it just kind of figures itself out like it I think it picks out what bit in that number to use but I'm not entirely sure but I did cross reference this with my professor and he said this is the correct way to do it uh, so you might be able to piece things together from there um, if there is some type of uh, correction in the future, I will make a comment in my YouTube video or uh, make an edit in the comments or something. I may make another video. I don't know. It depends. Um, 